Platform trading is a small subset in the larger world of investment fraud, as are Ponzi schemes and other types of investment frauds. And so uh, the key to any investment fraud case is the idea of the big lie. The big lie is that I'm going to ask you for money, and I'm going to tell you that money is going to be invested in a certain type of security, whether that's a stock or a bond or a commodity or foreign currency trading or, or investing in my business. But in fact, what I'm going to do is something entirely different with your money. I'm going to use your money to enhance my lifestyle. Or sometimes in a Ponzi scheme, I'll use your money to give money back to previous investors to create the illusion of legitimate investment returns. So platform trading is a small lie that's often used in the terms of the larger world of investment fraud. Uh, it's a small segment, but it apparently can be very lucrative. Absolutely, for the, for the, bad, for the bad guys. Yeah, and for and the can bad end up guys. a lot of time in prison for the bad guys. And I've seen a lot of economic damage here in Hawaii and elsewhere in, in, for people who actually believe in the world of platform trading and believe this is a legitimate investment vehicle, which is why it was important for the FBI to push out some information in our public forums and in forums like this to get the word out there to the public that, that if someone comes offering you an investment in a platform trading program or, or wants to finance your business using that, you should grab onto your purse and wallet and run the other way. Uh, obviously. A lot of people don't do that, and the question is, why? Well, the, the investment returns being offered by these scammers, whether there's platform trading or any kind of investment fraud, are so astronomically high, and they're also coupled with the promise of low risk. And I would maintain that there's no such thing out there in the real world as high investment returns coupled with the promise of low risk. Mm -hmm. But it seems very enticing to a lot of people, particularly people who uh, have the kind of gambling attitude in their lives to put their money in something like that, particularly when legitimate investments like a CD at the bank might be paying 1%, 2% if you're lucky. <laughs>
from the top 50 or the top 100 European banks to generate these, these profits. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a secret program. They don't like talking about it anymore. The Federal Reserve is involved as well as the European version of the Federal Reserve. They regulate it. It's also regulated by Interpol because they don't want organized crime to get involved. Oh, so the uh, enforcement uh, area is involved in this. That's and you can't great. get involved in these programs at all if you have any criminal history. So if you want to invest in this, you, I'm going to need to do a background check on you to make sure you're legitimate. And also the third thing, the, the third pillar of this is the idea that the, the, the program that would benefit from this, um, this, this platform trading program that I'm, that I'm thinking might be perfect for you has to have some kind of humanitarian element to it. It has to be good for society and, good, and, for, and for the greater good. And that's what the World Bank requires. And so here's what you can do. If you want to give me $100,000 and sign a non-disclosure agreement and a non-circumvention agreement, I can, I can hook you up with these platform trading folks in Europe who can then turn that $100,000 into as much as $20 million within just a few short weeks. But I'm going to need you to sign a confidentiality agreement and you need to promise me with a blood oath that you don't talk about this to anyone. Okay? And, and if you even were to call the Federal Reserve right now or the SEC or the FBI or the state of Hawaii, they would deny that these trading programs exist no, because they're that, that I'm secret. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm not going to do that. I trust you. Okay. That's the investment pitch, Leo, and every word that just came out of my mouth was a lie, okay? None of that is true. There's no such thing as these trading programs. That's not how Europe financed the Marshall Plan. But people tell this. It's an urban legend that's existed now for at least 20 or 30 years in the investment fraud community, and we hear it again and again and again. The terms change, but the facts remain the same, and the problem is there's no such thing as a medium-term note trading program, a platform trading program, prime bank guarantee program. As soon as you hear about any secret trading program with the top 50 or the top 100 banks, there's just no such thing. You might as well invest your money in a unicorn. <laughs> Anybody tried that? <laughs> it, 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 would, it would make more sense than the nonsense being spewed out by these platform trading characters. Well, the other thing yeah, that, uh, that struck me with that is this, uh, this uh, requirement uh, to, uh, to pledge to secrecy. Yep. Don't tell anybody about this because uh, it's special. Uh, the, the other element uh, that um, uh, is this uh, uh, aspect of having a special relationship. Right. That it, allows you to get involved in something like right. this. Right. And that, that's part of the pitch also yeah. is that I can get you into this program, yeah. but Merrill Lynch can't. Bank yeah. of Hawaii can't. First yeah. Hawaiian Bank can't. Only I, because I have this special connection, this link into these secret programs in Europe. Yeah. That's part of the pitch, and that's why you're going to do business with me and not go to your bank. That there's also uh, uh, an element at some point about the immediacy of a need for to make a decision rapidly. Yeah, because these, the, the door only opens for small windows of time to enter into these trading platforms. That's yeah. part of the wrap, right? Yeah. And so the idea is that I need you to I need to do a quick and dirty background check on you to make sure you're yeah. not a criminal, right? Because right. because we don't want any criminals involved in sure. this. Yeah. So it creates that sense of urgency in the intended victim that yeah. they want to get this thing done. And the idea that it's some kind of exclusive club that not everybody can enter is also very attractive to many of the victims. And the, the amount of money is uh, pretty significant. How do they, how do they find out what, what, what you might be able to invest? Usually at the very beginning, before you have that sit-down meeting, they ask for your past three or four months of bank statements. They want to see how much money you have on hand that you can yeah. enter into these programs. Okay. And you'll be shocked to learn, Leo, they'll, they'll be happy to take whatever you got. If you have $10,000 available, they can put it into these fake trading programs yeah. to generate a million dollars. And yeah. the investment returns being offered are always astronomical. The amount of money they're willing to take from you, that's pretty flexible. And so uh, your guidance is, number one, does this person have a license to be uh, in the investment area or not? Does that apply in this kind of a situation? or Without a doubt. I've never yeah. seen a legitimate licensed investment professional in the state of Hawaii offering pri you know, prime bank guarantee or platform trading programs. Yeah. They, um, you know, we, the investment community knows that these things are nonsense. They know that they would mostly be laughed out of the room if they began offering these yeah. types of things. And so I think this is a very first step. Licensure should be a, a, a quick first step, and that's an easy thing to do. I think you can even do it perhaps on the DCCA's website. Yeah. Just check out and see if that person's licensed. Now, again, we've seen people with licenses who are crumbs, who do horrible things to their clients and to their intended clients, 
but at the very least, is a very first step of, yeah. of, of evaluating the legitimacy of an investment. Is the person offering this to me licensed to give me this investment to begin with? So you find out not licensed. Bell should go off right there. Bell this should per, go off. This person okay. right now is breaking any number of state securities laws by even offering this investment in the state of Hawaii. So what should the person do who's been approached on this basis? What should the person do? Well, my perfect rule would be to call me. Yeah, you know, right? Because I, I love you, working twenty four seven. I love working these cases. If you call the FBI at eight zero eight five six six four three zero zero, yeah, and tell them you uh, you suspect an investment fraud has taken place, eventually that complaint's going to make its way to my desk, and we can begin assessing is this worthy of a federal investigation. If for some reason you want to speak to someone smarter and better looking, you can call the DCCA Securities Enforcement Branch, right? They do a great job. There are your securities regulators are looking out for you, okay. and they can take the first blush at the case, and, and they'll bring me in if they feel it's appropriate. Okay. So what information do you need to be able to assess? You got if this call comes in, an individual's on the line. What should that individual be prepared to, to provide? Well, I, I'd, love to be, I'd love to hear them recount to me the investment that's being offered to them. Okay? I'd also like to know who's offering that investment. If they have a name, that's great. If they have a name and an address, even better. If they have a, a, um, a phone number, I can work backwards from that. You know, I'd like to know how they found out about this investment. I'd like to know if they knew of anyone else who might have invested already, any victims that exist, so we can begin branching this thing out and making this more than just a one victim case. Now let's say, let's take the interesting point where an individual doesn't immediately realize and trust this person and signs a non-disclosure agreement. It's for an illegal act, so that non-disclosure agreement is... It's not worth the paper it's written exactly. on, okay? These non-disclosure agreements that people sign saying they're not going to talk about an investment that they're doing, if they feel that they've been defrauded or they have any whiff that this is less than legitimate, you can take that thing and throw it out the window. It has no legal standing. There can be no recourse against you from contacting the FBI or a securities regulator about a fraud that may have already occurred. Let's go to the next step. The bells don't go off until you've done a wire transfer or written a check or whatever, okay? Uh, what, is, what, what happens in those particular type of cases where the money has actually been deposited? Well, I, I, I'll tell you that the FBI is very good at putting bad guys in orange jumpsuits. We're not the best bill collectors, though. And right. oftentimes, these con men who are stealing money from people in an investment that for fake investments are not taking that money so they could put it in their 401k for a rainy day. They're taking that money so they could spend it. And so if we can locate any assets whatsoever, whether they're sitting in a bank account or whether they've been converted to Porsches, any assets out there that we can seize that are derived from that criminal activity, we'll seize it, forfeit the, that, and then get the money back to the victims. I have to tell you though, that's very rare. By the time our phone rings, usually the money's been spent by the bad guys.